science, politics, industry, education, sales. <clears throat> Here's one of the most important leadership roles in the future, parenting. Parenting, mother and father. Or sometimes a single father or a single mother that has to be both mother and father. This is such an incredible challenge. Guess who the great heroes are in our country? Teachers and single mothers. I can't imagine the job. It's almost too tough to imagine. I was coming back once from San Diego, back to Los Angeles, and it was one o'clock. I'd been to a very late meeting. I stopped by Denny's. 24-hour coffee shop was open. I stopped by Denny's. It's one o'clock in the morning, and I walk in to have a little something, a piece of pie, I think it was, and a cup of coffee. And at Denny's at one o'clock in the morning was the Avon lady. <laughs> and she had a couple of waitresses around her and she was showing the Avon products. One o'clock in the morning. When I finished my pie and coffee, I engaged her in conversation. I said, I have never seen an Avon lady at Denny's at one o'clock in the morning. <laughs> She says, well, this is the best time. When the waitresses aren't so busy, and one at a time or two at a time, they can come and sit at my table, look at what I've got and make purchases. I says, why do you do this? And she said, I'm a single mother with two children. Don't have to say any more, right? One o'clock in the morning at Denny's. This is called commitment of the best kind, right? Wow, these are the heroes. People that have such extraordinary circumstances to have to deal with, and they do it. They have such responsibility and they do it. Right, they're stacked high with, you know, difficulties and they, they do it, they do it. Especially mothers. So the challenge is parenting, leadership in parenting. Here's the next challenge in leadership. To step above mediocrity, where you can not only help yourself, but help someone else. Now, here's the refinement of leadership skills. This is a good list to make. Be strong, but not rude. Be kind, but not weak. Strength we need, rudeness we don't need. Kindness we need, but not weakness. Some people mistake weakness for kindness. But don't do that for yourself. Next is to be bold, but not a bully. <laughs> Refinement of leadership skills. Next is to be humble, but not timid. Humility we need. Timidity you must overcome. Drive it into a small corner. Don't let it dominate your life. Whatever you have to do. Next is to be thoughtful but not lazy. Here's a good one. To be proud but not arrogant. Pride we need, arrogance we don't need. Family pride, personal pride, community pride, school pride, team pride. We do need pride, but not arrogance. Next is humor without folly. This is part of sophistication everybody needs to work for. Humor without folly. Witty, but not silly. These combinations are sometimes really difficult to pull off. Here's what the old prophet said. This is a good one for your notes. Be as wise as a serpent and as harmless as a dove. How to be both wise and harmless. See, that is, that takes some real doing. Most wise people are not that harmless and most harmless people are not that wise. But the real challenge is to be both wise and harmless.
one of the writer New Testament said, I've learned to be both ambitious and content. Now that is a real stretch. But here was his solution. To be content with what you've achieved and ambitious for more. Right? To engage in contentment with what you... If you're always discontented with what you've achieved or what you have, see that, that is the wrong malady. But if you're happy with what you've achieved, but ambitious for more, that's the key. Most ambitious people are not that content, and most content people are not that ambitious. But he said, here's what to strive for, to be both ambitious and content. To be both wise and harmless. Next, in leadership. Here's the major studies for leadership as you continue your journey. Number one, the study of possibilities. Play the what-if game. What if I had the resources to make the investment so my family would be secure and I had reached financial independence? What if? If you engage in the what-if game for the future, what if? I took these extra classes. What if I developed these extra skills? What if I really disciplined myself to do more than I've ever done before? What could possibly be the outcome? Engage in that what if game. What if I found the right people over the next six months? What could I possibly accomplish that I haven't accomplished so far? This is good, the what if game. When I found an unusual financial opportunity, the first night I played the what if game. By three in the morning, I'd made about three million dollars. <laughs> on paper on paper but jot this down that's where it starts what if I had two what if I had five what if I had five and they each had five and we all worked together for this common cause what could we accomplish wow just play the what if game and then that saves you from later having to play this game if I'd only if I'd only kept that piece of property instead of selling it. Years and years ago, I owned 10 acres in Carefree, Arizona. I bought it for $50,000 and I sold it for $80,000. I made $30,000. Here's what was tragic. I didn't need to sell it. It is now worth probably over a million dollars. So now I say, if I'd a, what? If I'd a only. But we need some of those experiences, right? To help give us a little better guidance for the future. So play the what if game, right? What if it went well? What if I found the right people? What if I had the health and the ability to do extraordinary things? I wonder what all I could do. Play that game. The study of possibility. Here's the next one. The study of opportunity. And you must learn to study opportunity because it, it comes in subtle forms. I got interested in building organization and recruiting people because I found out people could make you rich and wealthy. Here's one of the greatest economic mistakes anyone can make, especially living in America, not understanding that people can make you rich. When I found the opportunity to do that, it helped me make my first fortune recognizing opportunity so that it doesn't come and go the moment was there and you didn't seize the moment begin to recognize more opportunity the opportunity for association all of my projects have been association two three people right the old phrase says that two or three agree nothing's impossible just not two or three hundred not two or three thousand just two or three with a common purpose you can do the most extraordinary things Recognize those opportunities. Here's the next. Be a student of ability. If you added one more skill and then one more skill. I started learning extra skills when I was 25 years old. When I met my mentor. One skill led to the next and one skill led to the next. Finally, my income reached unbelievable proportions. Having learned these skills. By the time I was 28 now, 29 years old, my income had hit about 30000 a month, which back in those days was so much money. It was unbelievable. 
I learned those extra abilities, those extra skills. I had no idea when I started how it would compound my income and change my whole financial life and financial future. So have you got that now? Be a student of ability. What if you took on one more skill and then took on one more skill? Next, be a student of inevitability, which is called consequences that you don't want to suffer. If you have a poor diet, it doesn't take that long for the early signs to appear. And if you keep it up, it doesn't take long for the serious signs to appear. The consequences are too deadly. We must be students of inevitability. Yes, inevitability on the positive side, but most of us, you know, can do that. But we must also study inevitability on the negative side. Consequences. If you're in a little boat on the River Niagara, on a little boat with no motor and no oars, and you're 100 feet from the falls, it's called inevitable. <laughs> it's, it's over. Somebody should have painted you that scene way upstream so that you wouldn't find yourself in such an inevitable position. Right? It's over before you reach the falls in a little boat with no motor and no oars a hundred feet away. Now here's the next one. Be a student of rationality. Be able to put everything through your own mind and your own thinking process. Challenge yourself to think constructively. Here's the next one. Challenge yourself to do some new thinking. I think it was Einstein who said, you know, the real challenge is to, how can we use the same thinking that caused the problems now to come up with the answers? So here's what we have to do, shift gears into some new areas of thinking, new ways of thinking how to solve problems. Not the old thinking that caused the problems, the new style of thinking that creates the answers. Rationality also means Yes, be optimistic, but also be a realist. Here's how it really is. Here's how it could be. Here are the possibilities, but here's how it really is. Take input, but not orders. Abraham Lincoln said, since I would be no one's slave, I will be no one's master. Be no one's slave. Take input, yes. Take advice, yes. Gather in information, yes. And then you decide. 